I'm going to put you on the surface of some unknown planet and ask you to compute the radius of that planet from your very limited vantage point. I'll give you a pencil, paper, a ruler, and a watch. What will you do? Any ideas? I got an idea and I think it might just work. If it's a sunny day and I put my stick in the ground, I should see no shadow if the sun is directly overhead. I note the time on my watch when there is no shadow at this spot. Now I'm going to run to a new location on the planet. I've traveled a distance D and I'll wait until my watch tells me that it's the same time of day that it was when I was at the previous location. Now it should be very clear that my stick will make a shadow because at this time of day, the sun is directly overhead at my previous location, not at my new location. We can use the length of the shadow to measure the radius of the planet. Now, let's suppose that the shadow is of length s. Try to picture it. Here's the radius, and the short leg of this right triangle is very close to the distance that I walked. That's a good approximation. I see another right triangle here that has a leg that's very close to the length of that shadow and a hypotenuse that's the length of my stick. Let's call that l. Now I notice that I have two similar triangles because these are both right triangles that share the same angle, theta. Think about it. We have two similar right triangles. And of course we can do a correspondence between those right triangles. The ratio of the hypotenuse of the large triangle which is the radius of the planet, to the leg of the large triangle, which is the distance that was walked, is going to be equal to the ratio of the hypotenuse of the small triangle, the length of the stick, to the leg of the small triangle, which is the length of the shadow, or approximately so. And we multiply both sides of this equation by d to solve for the radius of the planet which would be the length of the stick times the distance that was walked divided by the length of the shadow that was measured. Of course, we can also get the circumference of the planet, 2 pi r, and substituting for r, we got 2 pi times l times d divided by s. Beings existed on planet Earth for millions of years, focused on the terrain in front of them, Sometimes they wondered whether or not that terrain had some shape at a grander scale. But it was not until around 250 BC that a Greek polymath, Eratosthenes, proclaimed, Aha! A globular spheroid is our home. He was right. The mathematical explanation in this video is a simplified version of what Eratosthenes actually did to measure the size of our planet. First, he used creativity and his sense of aesthetics to guess that the Earth was round. And then, and only then, could he check his assumptions against his observations and reasoning. <laughs>